Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, so yeah, I'm the last talk of the day. Couldn't actually think of a better talk to um, preface my talk with, so that was well, good planning if that was planned. Well done. Um, but as the last talk of the day, it is speaker tradition. I know I'm the only thing standing between us and the drinking time, so I'm going to keep it as brief as I can um, and talk to you about something that I'm really passionate about, which is uh, local gaming. Oh, I see. Cool. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, yes, my name is Amy, otherwise known as Hello Miss Potter in game and on the internet. Um, that's probably how most people would know me. Um, in, like Lauren, I love Twitter, uh, in case you couldn't tell by this flagrant display of affection. Um, I love having conversations via Twitter, so if anyone wants to uh, say hi or bring up anything with me or share anything from this talk, because I believe that these things are worth sharing, um, please do feel free. I like chatting. So, what is it that I'm passionate about? I'm passionate about games, design, community, and social connection. And I'm at my peak happiness when these things combine, as they're going to in this talk. And as mentioned, um, a lot of people don't know, but I did originally train as a graphic designer, uh, until, long story very short, some interesting water cooler chat at a very boring at the time job turned into a new project for uh, myself and my now business partner, and eventually a business, which is Sleeping Tiger. Um, and so it is a platform for gamers uh, in its broadest sense, but um, we'll talk about it more in a bit. So, to talk about the future, we normally need to talk about the past first. So once upon a time, wouldn't be a fairy tale without it, um, some of us probably remember when we gathered in arcades and land centers to play video games with friends. Then consoles arrived. Playing from home was a novelty. Then consoles got cheaper. Costs were cut by shipping consoles with one controller instead of two. And then along came the internet, and with it, online multiplayer. Now we could play with our friends, off online. We didn't even need to leave our house to hang out. How amazing. Online multiplayer brought with it so much possibility and excitement uh, for makers and for players of games. Recent AAA blockbusters like Call of Duty and Overwatch, for example, are all about bringing together... Oh, sorry, I've missed a bit. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back. Players became more demanding than ever. And what easier way to satisfy the desire for more, more, more than to link them together online for limitless hours of unique gameplay. The future of games seemed online only. However, recent AAA blockbusters, like Call of Duty and Overwatch, are about bringing people together online, <clears throat> weaving players' experiences together in advanced and extremely unique ways. Which sounds pretty awesome. Think of all the people that I can connect with. You'd think finding friends online would be so easy now. We've already done the hard work of finding a common interest. Unfortunately, not for the most part. Online people are reduced to avatars and usernames. We've learned that it's hard to convey human emotion online. The online gaming world has become full of people hiding behind their keyboards, talking about what they did with your mother the night before. Arcade style gaming, <laughs> arcade style gaming and couch co-op offered little value to publishers in this ever-connected world. We're playing games more and more than ever, but seeing the people we play with less and less. I can't play Overwatch in my own house on my own console with someone else. Uh, it's become a real challenge to make a human connection while gaming. And if this sounds familiar, it's probably because the exact same thing happening in other aspects of our lives. Consider this. Online play is to gaming as social media is to hanging out with your friends at the weekend. Just as social media has ironically driven us into isolation, the promise of an online global gaming community has left us doomed to play with whatever idiot the internet spits out next. <laughs> We've become familiar with this world. When the internet was new, stranger danger was real. You'd have never met someone that you were playing with online. But we've been living in this ever-connected world for a while now, about 25 years. So let's step away from gaming for a second, I know. I'm sorry, only for a little bit. <laughs> a lot of the new technology that we have is helping us connect in the new world. We're wiser now. We know about stranger danger, but we're ready to go out and embrace it, the adventure, in the safest way possible, of course. Tinder, meetup.com, which is basically just IRC chat rooms in real life, let's be honest, and Let's Lunch. These are all platforms that are built around the idea that a connection can be made online, but it's more meaningful once you take it offline. So this is a quote by one of my favorite uh, digital designers, Hannah Donovan, and it is, computers can't yet give a damn the way people do. So she says this, uh, and that computers can't create a completely human interaction. Whether or not they're going to, I, um, 
It's terrifying. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and so Hannah's work deals a lot actually in the music space. Uh, and there's a lot of similar changes kind of going on there with the way music's distributed, shared and enjoyed as well. It's kind of actually quite similar to games, so I really enjoy this quote. But we are seeing more physical gaming conferences than ever before, play by play. PAX, GX, just to name a few of the gaming specific ones. And then there's all the tech that supports those events, like uh, Little Reggie or Event Finder or whatever multiple things the conference is using to run things these days. Um, and the physical world and the digital world are becoming much more closely linked. Did you know that gamers are actually people? <laughs> and people crave human interaction. Being local is more important to gamers now than it ever has been before. And when I talk about local, I don't mean specifically being connected in, by a LAN cable, although I am an advocate for that as well, it's pretty fun. Um, I mean interacting in your local area, in your city or your, uni like your university or like on your home turf. If we were to stay true to the original online gaming model, then we wouldn't need gaming conferences. And we all know we need gaming conferences. <laughs> so the time is now. We are craving a return to the local, to real life gaming. For larger publishers who make games, local events can scale to the needs of a community. Every year there are massive local events like PAX, QuakeCon, MineCon, BlizzCon, Con, every con, um, which bring together communities in the thousands. And even if you don't like playing multiplayer games, I bet you've had more than one enthusiastic conversation with someone centered around a great game that you've both played. Or recently been together with friends in a room, huddled around a single screen, watching a game be played. Esports audiences are rivaling those of regular sports, and this is all local connection. We could all watch these things at home, but we don't. We leave our houses and we get together. Even in single player games, there's a desire for local community. No one human is an island. So, this local boom in gaming uh, is really reminiscent of something called the New Games Movement, which was in the 1970s and people started playing physical games uh, in public. It started as a political movement that was kind of about protesting the Vietnam War, but um, it was mainly just hippies gathering in the street to play games. <laughs> At the time, gaming was considered something that was just for children, and this movement kind of broke that down, um, which I think is pretty cool, and it might remind you of something. Can we talk about Pokemon Go for a minute? <laughs> I can't believe no one else has. I thought that I was going to have to say something like Pokemon Go for the 27th time, but I didn't. Um, how great was Pokemon Go? We can argue all day about whether or not it was a good game, but it sure brought people together. With all the horrible stuff that happens in the news for the most part, it was pretty awesome seeing all people from all kinds of walks of life getting up off their couches, going outside to hunt for Pokemon. It got me really excited about the future of gaming and the power of games to be a force for good. I love local events, where gamers gather physically to play together. Of course, it's an online game we've play, gathered to play you more often than not. We could be able to play it from home, but there really is something magic about getting together in the same room to play, seeing people's faces, having real conversations and making real connections. Blizzard, the publisher of Hearthstone, understands this concept well. This is a fireside gathering that Leaping Tiger hosted a couple of weekends ago. Uh, they send physical prizes out to community managers, they promote local events through their official website. They get it, and it's pretty awesome. It's also been super awesome over the past few years to see more and more developers re-embracing the couch co-op. We're all probably pretty familiar with these great multiplayer titles. Overcooked designer Phil Duncan said, some of my fondest gaming memories involved gathering around a screen with my friends or my family, and that just felt like an experience we wanted to try and recapture. I think they nailed it. <laughs> now, I usually have to preface this talk, believe it or not, with a convincing argument that gamers are in fact social creatures. We know gamers are and have always been social, no more or less than any other human being. I argue that we're simply missing the digital opportunity to make meaningful connections. I believe we want to find a way to get back to the offline feeling that we miss without throwing away the technological advances that we've made. Great examples of doing this are using our ever-present smartphones to play Jackbox games or VR arcades from Emory's talk, which got me really excited. <laughs> we need to keep the excitement, the adventure, the opportunities offered to us through technological advancement 
but make a return to the local mindset of being a good human being and making meaningful connections. Here's where my baby, Leaping Tiger, is working to make the dream a reality. So Leaping Tiger is a technology product that allows you to find players, events, meetups, get together online, and play in real life. It has a huge focus on building local community, prioritizing discovery first in a gamer's local city. The online world is global though, so of course you can use it anywhere, but we are about building meaningful connections. So finding someone who plays the same games as you do and lives maybe 10 minutes across town. Now you can get lunch or go to the movies. The beauty of Leaping Tiger is that these events are already happening. People are already making their own connections, breaking through these barriers that technology has. Uh, but however, finding those people has become a challenge. So unless you know someone who knows someone who knows something, these grassroots events can be really hard to find. Oops. So this is a great quote by Mark Bolton, one of my favorite designers. Um, it's kind of the way I look at most design problems, including my work at Leaping Tiger. So on its own, content is pretty dumb until some smart design grabs it and displays it in the right context. There's so much stuff online, things, content. Um, in this case, it's information about players and events uh, that people want to be able to connect with. So having this information spread around all across the internet isn't very useful. The content is a bit dumb and it certainly doesn't know how to help you find it. Um, of course, if people want to, they control the internet and they can find what they're looking for generally if they've got enough time and determination. Um, but Leaving Tiger is all about bringing that local gaming information directly to people, making it easy for them to find the local content they want by displaying it in the right context. So what's the moral of this fairy tale? If technology can connect us in ways that humans can't, and humans can connect us in ways technology can't, the future of games, to me, is understanding both. And this is the intersection where Leaping Tiger lives. So next time you're working on a game, perhaps, take the time to consider the ways the community can connect outside of the digital game itself. And together, we can bring back the human gaming experience. <laughs>